Welcome, everybody, to Stadium Comics' new show, Pull This. We have with us the lovely Alice Quinn, creator of Quintessential Comics, where she talks about comics happening uh, here in Toronto, in the GTA, and all over the world, really. And um, she also runs a book club, which is pretty fantastic stuff. And, and beside me, as you know, the infamous Ricky Lima, writer extraordinaire of Black Hole Hunters Club, Deep Sea, and some super cool upcoming releases as well, yeah. I'm sure. I did a book for Mississauga. It was like a history book. It was pretty good. He's got some stories on this monstrosity. We could go on all day talking about Ricky but and his don't, amazing accomplishments. We don't have time for that. <laughs> Because we have to talk about pull lists. Alice, what is a pull list? Well, it's a good thing you asked. For us avid readers of comic books, we want to make sure we get the comics we want. So we go to our local comic shop and we say, Hey, we want to subscribe to these comics. We want you to pull these lists of comics for us. And that way nobody buys them before we get to the store. That's right. Yeah, and it helps uh, stores to make their orders so they know how many to bring in. So you never get screwed out of that copy. Like Ninja Turtles 44, that book flew off the shelves. Just flew. Only people that got it are the people who subscribed to it. So that's why. Subscribe. That's and that right. way you get your comics. Today we're talking about books coming out in April. And uh, we're going to do a quick rapid fire of some books. And then we'll go in depth with some of the bigger books coming out in April. Yeah, a little discussion about those. For now, what are the cool, interesting little little things coming yeah. out in April? One cool book coming out, Archie vs. Predator. From Dark Horse. From Dark Horse Comics. That's exciting. Do you think Archie could take on the Predator? I don't know. We're going to have to read it and find <laughs> out. Hopefully he kills him. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they're going to make friends and then make Almost. a cake or something. It's like when the Punisher came to Archie. From Dynamite, we got Jungle Girl Season mm. 3, Issue 1. If you liked Seasons 1 and 2, uh, Masks 2, Issue 1, and Reanimator, Issue 1. Do you think they'll do a Jungle Girl vs. Predator crossover? I don't know, but if Hopefully. they do, I'll buy it. I'll I pull it, yo. Jungle Girl, Frank Cho on art, so you know the ladies are voluptuous and the jungles are lush. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, right. I do. And so from IDW, we got Drones, which is a one in five. Do you like these miniseries? I do. I do, too. I like knowing there's yeah. going to be a definite end, I knowing agree. how much I sign up for. Also, yeah. it shows that the creators are planning a five-issue arc. Right? I love it. It's great. Good stuff. Uh, Empire Rising, number one. And something exciting, Uncle Scrooge, number one. Scrooge McDuck. Can't get enough of those Disney yeah. comics, you yeah. know. Uncle Scrooge is the one who swims through money, right? Yep. Classic. He's got three ducks that he's an uncle to. Yeah, Huey, Dewey, and Bertie. And they get all sorts of crazy ducktails. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 80s? Probably, yeah. I was totally alive then. Oh. Image Comics. Yeah, we, got, we got No Mercy, number one, coming out. We got Jupiter's Circle. It's a prequel to Jupiter's mm -hmm. Legacy, so if, if you like Jupiter's Legacy, you want to sign up for this do you, first uh, issue. Do you think that Mark Millar is doing that because Frank Wiley so slow doing Jupiter's Legacy? He's like... <laughs> I gotta come out with more books. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Suck it. Tithe, number one. And Pisces, number one. What's your sign, Alice? Taurus. Hey, I'm a Taurus, too. Yes. Theoretically, we shouldn't be able to sit at the same table together. <laughs> Why not? Apparently, Tauruses don't get along, but, you know. Also, the astrology stuff is complete crap. <laughs> Pretty much. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, f some cool trades coming out from Image Comics this month. We got Spread Volume 1 and Walking Dead Volume 23. Mm. Have you been reading Spread? No. No. You're missing out. Spread is, <laughs> is so it good? good. It's like so good. Also, coming out this month, Rick and Morty Issue 1. But yeah, if you, if you like the show and you can't wait for Season 2... We got a little comics for you. I'm so yeah, excited. So. Hopefully the Meeseeks are in it, because Meeseeks oh. are hilarious. What else we got coming out in comics this month? Well, let me tell you. In April, something interesting is happening over at DC. We got uh, Convergence happening throughout the whole month. And with Convergence, there's going to be uh, smaller titles being released in April and May, like two-part stories, um, which will be super exciting. Which ones are you excited for, Alice? 
Well, personally, I'm really excited for the question because way back in the 52 Weekly series, if you guys remember, they uh, transitioned question from being the original uh, to being a Ren Rene Montoya taking on the mantle of the question. So that's going to be super cool. They're picking it off there. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Also, just the whole idea of like uh, looking at superheroes through generations and having just sort of like little shorts with each of these characters in their time. Yeah. And then moving on. So. I'm excited cool. for Shadow of the Bat, where uh, they bring Asriel and he's doing stuff because Batman's back is broken. And he's got those ears that are like. <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> um, all right. And now, what's going on with Marvel? In Marvel, we have Avengers Ultron Forever, number one. Max Ride, First Flight, number one of five. Avengers Operation Hydra, number one. Edge of Spider-Verse, trade paperback. You guys should all pick that up. Oh my god, Edge of Spider-Verse was so amazing. Sorry, just had to say. That was really good. And Spider-Verse hardcover. So you can get the whole collection of Spider-Verse right there. What was your favorite Spider-Verse story, Edge of Spider-Verse story? <laughs> Doesn't even need to be said. Right, the first one, right? Edge of Spider Verse number two with Gwen Stacy was probably the best single issue I've read in like three years. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. It was really well crafted. The art was really good. It was like, they don't have issues that are like self contained anymore. And that one was perfectly self contained. It had multifaceted stories. I could go on, but no. that's not what this Fair is enough. about. Fair enough. No, exactly. You, your love of Spider Gwen is real. I get it. All right, now we're going to move into more in-depth reviews of some of the bigger books coming out. Rolling up our sleeves. Yeah. So Rebels number one. In a rush of great public resistance to an oppressive and excessive government, a hometown militia movement is formed in rural America. This is not 2015, but 1775. With the war for independence playing out across the colonies, young Seth and Mercy Abbott find their new marriage tested at every turn as demands of the front lines and the home front collide. Uh, since we're part of the British colony, I cannot condone this book because... Uh, we're not. We're independent. <sighs> we're Canada's independent. I am part of the British colony. Where do you live? I live in Canada, but I don't <laughs> accept the Prime Minister. No. Uh, I think you... the Queen is technically still, like, our... Who knows? Sovereign? What, what is history? I don't know what history is. Are you excited <laughs> for this book? Yeah, maybe then uh, Ricky can learn a little history Hopefully. about the Revolutionary War. Yeah. I hope they give us a little, uh, a bit of what it feels like to be in, in 1775 because for a lot of us, it, it's hard to contextualize and it's hard to empathize mm -hmm. with earlier situations and it's like what's an outhouse like yeah. what do you mean you you dug for for when you went to the washroom um so yeah, yeah. i, I think... hope they show us a little more of that day-to-day -day life and the struggles that care uh, people went through on an individual and personal basis for sure and i think my um loathing of period pieces has been well established because i can't get over the smell of everything <laughs> I get, I, they don't shower and i'd imagine everything smells so well, you're, you're reading it in, in this time, so you don't have to smell it. It's not but, like a scratch and stiff. But it's in my head. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, they're kissing? Gross. They haven't brushed their teeth in like Ew. three years. They do it with straw. What? Straw? Like hay kind of straw? Yeah, they pick their teeth with like straw and like soap. Well, hopefully they wash in Rebels, please. And the art looks super awesome. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, we have Savior, number one, coming out April 18th. And this is by Todd McFarlane and Clayton Crane. Savior O R. There was a Saviors by J Bone. I, right, what happened that book? Uh, that book it petered awesome. off into nothing, but it was really good when it came out. What if the most dangerous man on earth was also the one trying to do the most good? The world is real. The people are normal, and then he appears. A man appears with no background, no memory, and no place to call home. But he has powers. Powers that seem to resemble those we learned about in Sunday school. Could it be? Is it possible that this man is much, much more than that? Is it possible that he is our savior in the flesh? And if he is, then why doesn't he know who he is or how he got his powers? Strip away the spandex and trappings of the traditional comic book superhero and ask yourself a simple question. How would I react if God suddenly appeared in front of me, but everything we have had been taught about him seems out of whack? 
What you would have left beyond our doubts is the presence of man who has to deal with the fact that his appearance in the world is seen as both a blessing and a curse. Some will see him as a hero, a messiah. Others will see him as an enemy because there isn't room for a person with godlike powers to disrupt the status quo of what we already believe. Some will rally behind him, others will denounce him, but none of us will be able to ignore him. Whoever wrote that copy loves words. So many words in that. That was kind of an epic copy right there. I know, right? So that is Saviors number one. Um, how would you react if God came down to earth right now? We probably wouldn't believe him, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's probably part of what goes on in the comic. Although, if he, if he did like some like miracles, then I'd be like, whoa, this guy's crazy. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, this is David Blaine. Where's the strings? Yeah, that's true. Right? <laughs> yeah. Would you be like violently angry at him like some probably would be? No, I would be like continually scrolling through my Tumblr page and, and not really caring. Um, sorry, but that's the honest answer right there. But let's be real, that's how most of us would react. Would uh, would the savior be on Tumblr? Would he be like trying to amass a following on Tumblr? I don't think he would be on Tumblr. I think people would take pictures or yes. make posts Senior and then gifts. put them up and he wouldn't know, right? We've also got Captara, number one, coming out April 29th by Chip Zdarsky and art by Kagan McLeod. This is going to be awesome, guys. But, for the blurb, a space expedition goes horribly wrong because if it didn't, there would be no story. Reluctant explorer Keith Kanga and his crew crash land on Captara, a world filled with danger and weird danger and dangerous weirdos. And if you can't survive, then Earth, the place where you live, is doomed. Join Chip Zdarsky, Sex Criminals, The Duck, and Kagan McLeod, Infinite Kung Fu, as they put the fi back in sci-fi and pretty much disregard the sci part in this epic story of punching and love. Oh, that's cute. Oh my god, Chip, write all the copy all the time. Seriously, that's how... I, I didn't just like put emphasis there for, for you know, fun's sake. It's it's written like that. Yeah. Did you read uh, Howard the Duck number one? I did. It's in our book club this month on Quintessential Comics. Ooh. Yeah, did you really like it? Was everyone like on board with it? We're actually doing it this Tuesday. I don't know when this is going to air, but you guys can totally tune in if you want and okay. give us your opinions. <laughs> um, and Kagan McLeod, fantastic art. Um, some people may know him from the covers on Kill Shakespeare or uh, Infinite Kung Fu he did. Yeah, is... he also does some like really good work in the National Post. Um, That's right. His like lifestyle stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. His, his art is just gorgeous. Just Fun gorgeous. fact, Shane Heron, the guy we're going uh, with Black Hole Hunters Club with, he has a Golden Girls portrait on his wall done by Kate McLeod. And it I looks fantastic. It. I believe Super it. Super good stuff. So, um... Are you a big fan of sci-fi stories? Right. I like to be a big fan of sci-fi stories. I find they're hard to approach because it's not only like you have to get into uh, different characters and different story, you have to get into a whole new setting. That's so true. a good sci-fi story has to set the setting really early on and then hook you into the characters and that way you're totally immersed within that. Well, um, they're going to take the sci out of sci-fi, so I think you're good. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be more like space fantasy, um, but fantasy isn't like a genre we use nowadays, so. That's true. So sci-fi without the sci. All right, so that's Captara number one. So from the newcomer on the block, Valiant, we have uh, Bloodshot Reborn number one, coming out April 15th, written by Jeff Lemire, art by Miko Suya. From the New York Times bestseller writer Jeff Lemire, The Valiant Green Arrow, a red-hot rising star Miko Suyin, Valiant Next delivers an all-new ongoing series for Valiant's most unrelenting hero. Bloodshot's nanites made him a nearly unstoppable killing machine. His enhanced strength, speed, endurance, and healing made him the perfect weapon, and he served his masters at Project Rising Spirit, a private contractor trafficking in violence very well. Now Bloodshot is a shadow of his former self. He lives in self-imposed exile, reeling from the consequences of his past life and the recent events that nearly drove him mad. But when a rash of shootings by gunmen who appear to look just like Bloodshot begin, his guilt will send him on a mission to stop the killers. 
even if it means diving headlong into the violence that nearly destroyed him. So, Bloodshot, pretty interesting character. I really like his design. Are you a fan of Bloodshot? Yeah, he's he's totally not like any of the similar characters within comics, like like Spawn, or Batman. He's totally different from either of those characters. Yeah, and I really like um, Jeff Lemire's writing too. Like his superhero stuff, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and the thing is, with new writers, you can get uh, a different take on the character and really go to different places you didn't think they would go before. Now, do you think this book's going to be super successful now that they've announced, like, a whole whack of value movies? I don't know if it's going to be super successful in itself, but I do think we're going to get a lot more focus on Valiant Comics and a lot more readers coming to check out what Valiant has to offer. Yeah. So, Bloodshot Reborn's got to bring it. There you go. And I don't think the popularity will really spike until the movies come out, and the movies are awesome, so hopefully that happens. So from DC Comics this month, we got Convergence coming out. This is it. The entire DC Universe, from the dawn of time through the New 52, must fight to survive against a threat that bends the multiverse to its will. Your favorite characters from every era and every forgotten series are all here. But are you going to say hello again, or just say goodbye forever? <laughs> What? I'm sorry. Um, they do have lots of exclamation points and question marks, so... Okay. The stakes have never been higher, as the heroes of Crisis, Zero Hour, Elseworlds, and more are brought together for Convergence. In the first issue of this weekly series, Brainiac has collected cities of doomed and forgotten worlds who must battle each other, and the losers will be destroyed! But why is he forcing this conflict? Join refugees from Earth 2 as they unlock the truth behind this world that exists outside of time and space and is very much alive. Is Bradyak really in control? Or is this planet named Telos an unparalleled force of evil? This exercised issue is packed with twists and turns and appearances you never thought you'd see, including <laughs> heroes from the hit series Injustice! Wow, that was a very <laughs> emphatic reading. When they put those exclamation points there, they're just asking for it, especially when they put stuff in capitals, then you have to, like, shout it, you know? Yeah, what's up with that? Just, like, take it easy, people. No, don't take it easy. This is serious drama here happening. That's true. I don't know if you, you heard Convergence. Um, but, no, it sounds pretty cool, and what it seems to be is it seems to be that uh, every week we're going to uh, look at a different sort of generation of heroes and how they're dealing with convergence in their era. Um, and it's going to be an event happening over April and May, and we're going to have two part stories from these characters. So we'll have a first part in April and the second part in May, I do believe. I do believe so, yes. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. And then uh, they're all sort of going to tie yeah. in together. You can head on over to stadiumcomics.com because they have a. Uh Nice little rundown of everything that will be coming out for that Convergence month. Yeah, so if you have any questions, yeah. it's a pretty good walkthrough. It's pretty sweet. I read it this morning, and I was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever read. I right. totally understand what Convergence is now. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, leave in the comments what you think of Convergence, and if you're excited. The possibilities! They're endless! Yeah, I'm pretty excited because new jumping on point, and I haven't read a lot of DC recently. So, let me get to check it out. And finally, from Marvel, we have Canon, Last Padawan number 1, coming out April 1st, April Fool's Day. Ooh! This book is no joke. Written by Greg Wiseman and drawn by Pepe Larraz. Canon Jarrus in Star Wars Rebels, he's a cocky, sarcastic renegade fighting against the Galactic Empire alongside the ragtag crew of the Ghost. But years before, at the height of the Clone Wars, he was known as Caleb Doom, a Jedi Padawan under the instruction of Jedi Master Deepa Bilaba. Neither Master nor Apprentice ever suspected that the clone troopers they command would turn on them upon the issuing of Order 66, the order to execute all Jedi. But how did Caleb Doom survive? How did he learn to survive on his own? And how did he become the man we know as Canon Jarrus? Writer Greg Wiseman uh, and artist Pepe Larraz 
bring us a tale bridging the years between the Clone Wars and Rebels. Have you been watching the Rebels show? Um, no, I'm waiting for more of it to come out so I can marathon it, because yeah. that's how I like stuff, but yeah, I'm really excited. I'm just excited for this whole new generation of Star Wars oh, stuff. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, because now there's like been so many generations of it, like, you know, in 10 years there'll be grandpas that are Star Wars fans, and they'll yeah. also be, like, you know, the father and the grandson, and they'll all be Star Wars fans, and they'll all be fans of different stuff. Fans of the original movies, of the 90s video games, of the <laughs> t 2010s. Wait, who's who's fans of the uh, the pre uh, prequels, huh? Nobody? Nobody? <laughs> what? We didn't forget about those or anything. Those weren't collectively erased from our minds. You know, I'm going to say this right now. I had no problems with the prequels. Well, when you were a kid, you didn't. And I'm sure if you don't rewatch them now, you won't have a problem with them. Maybe if I watch them now, I'd love them. Who knows, right? You wouldn't <laughs> get, like, bored by any of that political yeah. conflict. So Star Wars Rebels, uh, that's going to be a big thing. And I think kids are going to be really into that. So put that on your pull list. It's going to be good. All right, Alice, that is the end of our new show. What? We've reached the Comic Summit. Man, time flies. Stared over the precipice <laughs> and looked into books coming out in April. And now, I hope you have a better idea of what you're yeah. going to pull in April, as do I. Let us know in the comments what you're going to be pulling in April and what you're excited about. And uh, let's get a discussion going. Hashtag pull this. <laughs> And we look forward to seeing you next month and filling you in on all the cool new comics coming out in May. In May. My birthday month. Me too! So, there you go. So I was pulled out of my mother on May. <laughs> oh, man, me too! Did she also have a C-section? I, I, I don't know. I should ask her. <laughs> Kevin was born in um, May as well. So. May is actually a really popular month for birthdays. It's because people like what's, to get it on What's in nine winter. months before that? Winter. Valentine's Day? Oh, maybe. Yeah, February, February is nine months before November. Good I think it's the end of the summer, right? I don't know. What yeah, it's the end of the summer. This show is done. Summer loving. <laughs> All right, um, see you guys. We want to thank you. Stadium Comics for hosting us, and we look forward to hearing about what you guys think of the show. Thank you, Alice, for coming down and uh, doing this with me. Can't wait to do it again next month. What's going on with your book club? So if you guys are watching this as soon as it comes out, my book club is Tuesday, March 31st at 7 p.m. We're uh, doing live to air through Google Hangouts, so you guys can watch it while it's happening live and ask us questions in the comments. Um, so I'm super excited about it. We're talking about Howard the Duck, Issue 1, and Hip Hop Family Tree Volume 1. They're super great. I can't wait to talk about it. And we got, we're, we're actually reading Captara for next month's book club Ooh. as well. Um, I've also got to pick another graphic novel, which will be announced we'll that. on that show. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next month.